can make past 20 seconds. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. We're going to give folks just a few minutes to get into the room. So bear with us here. Actually, when I say a few minutes, I mean 30 seconds. So stay tuned. We'll get started here pretty soon. All right, I see the room filling up. This is great. Let a few more people cycle in and then I think we're gonna get going. Um, yeah, let's do it. All right, hello and welcome to Clean Air Lawn Care. My name is Joe Olson. I am the Senior Communications and Engagement Manager at Fresh Energy. And Fresh Energy is a clean energy nonprofit here in Minnesota. And today we are co-hosting this event with Shift to Electric and the American Lung Association. Um, and before we start tonight, on behalf of myself and on behalf of Fresh Energy, I just want to acknowledge that with the jury finding Derek Chauvin guilty, Minnesota has taken a really important first step on a very long road to dismantling the racist systems in our state and society. Um, but I think as we, many of us, all of us agree, this verdict alone just doesn't deliver justice and our journey has only begun. So Fresh Energy has a lot more to say about this. You can find uh, Michael Noble, Fresh Energy's executive director's full statement um, on a blog post on our website at fresh-energy.org. And now I'm gonna move on to a few housekeeping items. We will be taking questions at the end of the webinar, but you don't have to wait until the end of the webinar to submit them. You can use the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen and file your comments there. And what's really fun about that function is if you see someone else's question that you like, you can like it and it upvotes it and moves it up the list. So it ensures that I see it and Yuka sees it uh, and we'll, so we'll start with the one at the end that has the most uh, most votes. So moving on to the all important introductions. So welcome to Yuka Kukunen. Uh, he is both with Fresh Energy and Shift to Electric. We're gonna be seeing a lot of Yuka and his garage tonight. Uh, we'll also be hearing from Julian Inns with the American Lung Association. And Lisa Thurston is with us today too. She's with the American Lung Association as well. And Lisa has a bit of a cold, so I think she'll be taking uh, some of the really tough questions during the Q&A and Jillian will be handling most of it. Um, but oh, to clarify about Jillian, she is a Green Corps service member serving with the American Lung Association. I know that's a really important distinction, so I wanna make sure to call that out. So moving on. We are covering an awful lot of topics tonight. You're probably gonna have a lot of questions as we progress through discuss the discussion and you could submit them at any time. Um, I am about to send you guys a poll. So you should see a pop-up here in a couple seconds. We just wanna get your take on where you are in your decision-making process around purchasing an electric lawnmower. It's always fun to see who's in the room at these things and, and what people are planning. Um, so while you're filling that out, I'll just remind you all that we're gonna be talking a lot about advancements in electric technology and what electric battery tech uh, can mean for clean air and your health. We'll also look under the hood of a few lawnmowers. That's why Yuka's all bundled up in his garage because he's sitting out there in the cold so he can show us these makes and models. Uh, and after that, we will go into the Q&A. So I'm gonna end the polling here Ooh, it looks like we've got a whole mix of people. I'm going to share the results. And it looks like about half of you are on the fence with how you want to proceed with uh, an electric lawnmower. So I think that's really cool. Um, I hope we'll answer your questions tonight. And uh, I think Yuka's got a great track record of answering even the weirdest questions. Um, so yeah, let's let's get going. Yuka, do you want to kick us? Oh, yep. Look, at I remember to do the poll and the reminder was unnecessary for myself. All right. Yuka, why don't you talk about technology advancements in uh, the world of batteries? All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Snowblower exclusive. Oh, sorry, it was actually uh, lawnmowers, but uh, it feels like Snowblower exclusive a little bit uh, from my perspective because I'm out in garage and it's not the warmest place. It'll be fine. Uh, spring is coming, summer will come, and we'll be all warm and nice. Anyways, um, Really what's happening with, with these um, electric lawnmowers, snowblowers, and all of this cool electric, electric technology that we are getting 
is uh, the battery tech advancement. Battery tech advancement really is, is what makes this possible for us. Um, if you look at that in 2010, the batteries cost till over thousand dollars per one kilowatt hour. So uh, battery that I have in my hand here uh, would have cost that time about three hundred dollars. So you can understand that it's a little um, hard to make affordable uh, systems if your battery itself is that expensive. Now we're starting to reach um, the level of almost to hundred dollars, probably with the smaller batteries, we're probably talking about hundred fifty dollars uh, per kilowatt hour. But now this one costs less than fifty bucks um, as to manufacture. So that's why we are starting to have affordable uh, loan equipment, electric available, and uh, and motor technology itself is already powerful. So that's that's why why this is moving forward. And the other cool thing that we are seeing is that we are have a going shift to renewable energy in electricity side. So grid electricity that we are getting from the grid is getting cleaner all the time. If you look at here, XL Energy's carbon emissions, they are coming down fast. So that means that uh, our uh, electric lawnmowers and others are not produ pr producing any local emissions. And even the electricity production, uh, the emissions are coming down there too. So uh, our equipment are getting cleaner every day. All right, next. We will move into hearing what impacts does this have in our air quality. And Gillian Ines uh, from Lung Association is going to be talking about that. Great. Thank you, Yuka. So as I said before, my name is Gillian Innes. I'm the Minnesota Green Corps member serving at the American Lung Association this year. And part of my sort of service term is to work on electric equipment education. So tonight I'm just gonna sort of touch on air pollution that's associated with lawn care equipment and what kind of emissions are produced with gas powered equipment, sort of how they affect us individually. And then also maybe a cool new resource that you can use to find the right piece of electric equipment for you. Next slide, please. What many people don't realize about emissions is that they come from mobile sources, especially our cars and our equipment, and that they are actually the largest source of pollutants in Minnesota today. And that's why we wanna focus our efforts on those fuels and vehicles, because those are the things that we can enact the most change in most quickly. So air pollution actually affects everybody, but it affects the young and the elderly, and especially affects people with respiratory conditions such as asthma and COPD. It also unfortunately affects people of color and low income communities because they disproportionately have, you know, higher condition or higher cases of respiratory conditions, higher, con higher cases of conditions that have respiratory effects. And they also tend to live in areas that have high air pollution as well. So there is actually growing evidence that seems to substantiate that people who are living in higher areas of air pollution actually adverse are more likely to experience adverse effects from COVID-19 as well. So all of that and more is look is can sort of be found in our road to clean air report. So at the bottom of this slide here, when the slide deck is sent out, you'll be able to click on it and it'll take you and you'll be able to find out all of that and more. And then as said, tomorrow is gonna to be the release of the state of the air report as well. And you can find even more specific local information in there as well. Next slide, please. So sort of getting into what we are actually here about today and looking at the pollution associated with gasoline powered lawn equipment. So right now it is approximated that about 200 million gallons of gasoline is used every year by Americans to fill up their lawn equipment. And they actually end up spilling an additional 17 million gallons of gas. And that those numbers can sort of be applied to any equipment, not just lawnmowers. So if you add all of that together, it ends up being a huge cost to both fleets and the consumers as well. And then just a little bit below on the volatile organic compound pollution, so both of these graphs are from the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. 
The graph on the left has a general breakdown of where these pollutants come from. And then on the right is a more specific look into the different categories that they are produced by. Next slide, please. According to the minister, or, sorry, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, about 26.7 million tons of pollutants are actually emitted by gasoline powered equipment alone each year. And if you think about that number in context, it is massive because those pollutants are being emitted right next to the operator. And the operator is, you know, inhaling all of those pollutants and they are at a much higher risk of affecting their health because of it. So while not everybody may think about the ways that their gasoline powered lawn equipment can impact their health, I kind of want to highlight how some of the lesser known pollutants produced by this equipment can impact you, specifically the particulate matter, nitrogen oxides, and volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. Next slide. So starting with particulate matter, it actually is produced in a lot of different sizes with gasoline powered equipment, but the one that we sort of focus on the most and can cause the most damage are the particle sizes that are 2.5 micrometers across or less, kind of aptly named. They are called PM 2.5 particles. And the reason they are so dangerous is because A, they can irritate your eyes and your airway, but B is because they are small and can deeply penetrate your lungs and can cause issues with both your respiratory and cardiovascular systems. So short-term side effects can cause a variety of health problems, which we kind of saw on the first slide in the presentation, but over time, it can increase your chances of COPD, chronic bronchitis, cardiovascular disease, or even lung cancer. So as you can sort of tell, this is a really important pollutant that we would like to get under control by switching to electric. Next, please. And then the two other pollutants I kind of wanted to touch on were volatile organic compounds or VOCs and nitrogen oxides or NOx. So these are actually significant because they directly affect the production of ozone in our atmosphere. So, and with ground level ozone. So VOCs and nitrogen oxides actually combine to create ground level ozone and actually ultraviolet light from the sun speeds up this reaction. So there's a lot more ozone being produced during the summer. And, you know, it's actually been, ozone has actually been likened to being a sunburn inside of your lungs when it's actually inhaled. So you can imagine in the summer, it gets worse and worse because of that. And if you can imagine that picture, you can imagine it might lead to some pretty bad side effects. So it can actually trigger or exacerbate asthma or other lung conditions and lead to hospital visits or hospitalization as well. So those are also really important to keep under control. Next slide, please. So this is my personal favorite slide. I have a lot of attachment to it. And it seems like that is a lot of what people might want to learn about today is how to sort of find an electric equipment piece that might be right for you. For this purpose, we'll just talk about electric and battery powered mowers, but there's a whole range of battery powered equipment that you can go to as well. So I'm really excited to share this with you. I've been working on this for a long time and it is sort of a resource that has a lot of different samples of brands that are out of and available right now that have a battery um, sort of a battery version of their mowers. So we at the Lung Association try to maintain brand neutrality so we're not promoting one brand over another. This is more of just a snapshot of what is currently available on the market. And this hopefully will become a tool that you can use in order to choose the best tool that is right for you because it is very different for everybody and what might work for one person might not work for another. So just to sort of go through the actual sheet a little bit, each one varies a little bit based on the actual piece of equipment or power source, but um, they all include different manufacturer specs, performance specs, and purchasing specs. So the manufacturer specs 
can be found on the left side of this picture here. It'll have the brand name, the model, and the photo of the actual product. And then in the middle is the performance, and that's all of the both mower performance and the battery performance as well. So for battery powered lawnmowers, it'll have cutting width, cutting height, if it has a collection bag, if it is self-propelled, all that kind of stuff. And then for the actual battery part, it'll have how many batteries the actual mower takes, the total battery capacity and voltage as well. So all of those are pretty important when deciding which one might be right for you. And then sort of on the right side of the picture here is the purchasing information. So there's a column for MSRP. Um, there's also a warranty column for how long the warranty on the actual mower is. And then there is an other equipment column. So a little bit of backstory on that. Batteries within a brand can be used in different equipment, but they cannot go between brands. So in this column, it says which actual pieces of equipment can use the exact same battery within that brand as the mower. So, and then there's a key at the bottom and it's pretty intuitive, like CS is chainsaw, PS is pole saw, and stuff like that. So I hope everybody finds this, you know, somewhat helpful. I spent a lot of time on it and I think you would all really enjoy it. So I think that's all for me. Yuka, back to you. All right. Thanks, Jillian. And I'll actually have to go first a little bit deeper on all the work that Jillian has put into this and um, and share a bit more information about those info sheets that are, are available. So you can go to electriclawninfo.org and download all of these info sheets that were just mentioned here. We have five info sheets there. Uh, the battery one uh, the, for electric lawnmowers, we have a battery ones and corded lawn mowers. Then we have one that is chainsaws, leaf blowers, trimmers, um, all other equipment. Then we have one for snow blowers and a new one for commercial lawn mowers. And the question is, are there many options available in the market? And boy, are there options. There are so many. If you think about a couple of years ago, still, when you went into a hardware store, you could have maybe one, found one or two electric lawn mower, if even that, depending on the store. Now, if you look at the list here, that uh, Gillian and uh, Ben from American Lung Association have put together, just the battery powered uh, lawnmowers list is five pages long. There's 59 different lawnmowers there. Corded ones, there's 20 of those. If you go into chainsaws, leaf blowers, trimmers, and others, there's 10 pages of those, 108 units. Snow blowers, 23 different kinds of snow blowers, electric ones available right now. And then commercial lawn mowers, even which a couple of years ago didn't exist, four pages, 27 units. Think about that. This is how fast the option, uh, uh, options have, number of options have uh, grown here. And then to just highlight the work that has put into, been put into this total of 23 pages, 227, 37 units, over 2,000 data, 2,800 data points. So that is a lot of work. And this is all available for all of you for free. Just go there, download, use it as you wish. Um, and thank American Lung Association for, and, and Gillian for doing all of this. So that's great. Okay, let's uh, move forward here. So if you talk about the electric lawnmower and the benefits of moving into this is first of all, you're using much less energy. So uh, it's, it's really way less energy that we, we are using when we are using electric because you don't have to try to use any mechanical uh, internal combustion engine there, which is not very efficient at all, especially when it's a small engine like that. There's no emissions. So uh, it's good for you when you're mowing the lawn or working any other equipment. It's great for your neighborhood. It's awesome for the city and even better for the planet. So there's not, not that that is really 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 good. Then they are also much quieter. Uh, they're good for you as a user, and of course they're good for your neighborhood. I have my uh, my um, neighbor here who got uh, electric lawnmower last year, and he said that with the earlier lawnmower he didn't want to go out in a in a, on Sunday to mow the lawn. 
sometime in the morning because he thought that he would be disturbing neighbors. Now he says, I can go anytime. If I want to go in the middle of night, no one will even notice. So that's that's kind of cool. It, they're so much quieter. Less vibration uh, and no need to mess with gas. You don't have to go and buy it. You don't have to store it. You don't have to be have have containers of gas or lawnmower that that is uh, evaporating the gas uh, in your garage. So your garage smells much better that way. Um, I was actually thinking today, if today would have been really really cold, I would have actually moved all of this equipment downstairs in my house. And I was like, I can do that because these are electric. I don't have gas. Nothing smells. Even my wife might be even okay with that. Who knows? So. Good thing. Another good thing about these is that they always start. You don't have to be pulling pulling the cord and being frustrated about it. You just turn it on, and that's that. They are much cheaper to use. I'll come back to that very soon, both in dollar-wise and time-wise. And it's very easy to do the maintenance. Um, I'll show you actually the maintenance pieces that are in, involved with uh, lawn mowers. They're lighter weight. In, in many cases, especially if you take the batteries off, they're definitely lighter weight at that point, and they're very easy to store. And I'll show you how that works. Next slide, please. So the question that you might start thinking first is that, do you want to buy a corded lawnmower or cordless? And uh, here are some suggestions for you. You should choose a corded one if you want the very affordable mowers. Usually they are between $100 and $200. So very, very affordable mowers. They are also lighter than the battery powered ones uh, because you don't have to have a batteries with them. So they're a, bit, a little bit easier uh, to move around that way. Um, but you need accessible outside outlets. So you have to have then good outlets around your house and then you have to be okay to deal with the cord. It is a little bit of hassle to work with the cord. That's understandable. Um, so, but if you're fine with it, they work well. I used a uh, corded one for years in my household. I was okay with working with the cord, but you just have to be mindful of that. Then I would recommend choosing a battery mower if you don't want to deal with the cord. If you're like, I don't want to be dealing with that. Or if you have a property where you have like a lot of trees and stuff like that, it's hard to get around with the cord and you would have to, have to do too much work with it. Definitely definitely not, not a good idea in that way. If you want a self-propelled mower, uh, the only self-propelled mowers that are available are on the battery ones. So some of them are self-propelled. Again, you can look at the list there. You can download the list, look at which one are self-propelled, and then you can choose that if that's uh, important for you. And then uh, good news is that you can use the same batteries with other yard equipment. So even if it costs you a little bit more to buy that uh, mower, you can then take the battery and uh, use it in other equipment. Just check out that the uh, line of uh, mower and, and equipment that you're buying into, that you, you it has all the options that you like to use in on your yard. Next slide, please. So how to choose a lawn mower? First, look at the size of your lawn a little bit. Uh, standard city lot is about 4,800 square feet. Then if you take the house and garage and a little bit driveway and so forth, landscaping, you usually about 3,000 square feet um, here in, in cities. Um, I measured my lawn was about 2,800. Um, so that's about that. And then think about how often do you mow and how much do you want to cut, cut each time? So it's like, how often do you even use it? Truthfully, I use our lawn mower very little um, because I like my grass a bit higher and uh, I don't put fertilizer on our, our mow, uh, lawn, so it doesn't grow that much. Um, so so that, that makes it also easier for me from the lawn mowing perspective. Um, but uh, it depends on how you approach your lawn. Then think about what kind of battery capacity you need. Um, I would say you knew, nowadays we're talking about usually from 100 to 400 watt hours. I think the newer batteries, some of them might be even bigger. This year, they tend to get a little bigger every year. Uh, but uh, if you want, for example, uh, more about 3,000 square feet, you're probably looking at something like a 200 watt hour uh, battery there. And I'll show you a little bit how, how that's done. Then think about how wide the deck should be in a mower. That's, that's one thing. And um, if you cut very rarely and you want to go through a long grass every time, 
then you might want to choose a higher voltage, although that's not straight um, comparison anymore. So the lower voltage ones are also starting to be very powerful. So that used to be more of the case, not so much anymore. So I would say, don't worry about if it's between 40 volts and 56 volts, it doesn't really matter. That's not something you should, you should really use there as a, as a decision point. Next one, please. So battery capacity and, and electricity costs. So this is important just for you to understand so you can compare different models. So how to calculate the battery capacity. Battery capacity, uh, usually you see like, there's a battery here that says 40 volts and uh, four amp hours. So can you compare the different batteries if you just look 40 volts and the other one is 40 volts or 56 volts, is that bigger? No, you can't do the comparison. Or then it says here, four amp hours. You say, okay, well now this is four amp hours. Can I look at the other battery that says eight amp hours? Is that double the size of this one? Uh, not necessarily if it's a big different voltage. The only way you can do the comparison is that you calculate the watt hours. And that's done by multiplying the volts to amps, so, or amp hours. And for example, in this case, you have 40 volts times four amp hours. This is 160 uh, watt hour battery. In our example, we have 56 volt and four, five amp hour battery. That's 280 watt hour battery. That is the capacity that is important. So you know how long you go uh, how how much energy they're actually stored in one of those one of these batteries? So usually, I said they are uh, 100 to 400 watt watt hours of uh, of uh, capacity here. And um, you can always add capacity by buying a second battery. So if you say, okay, well, I have this one here, but I based on the calculation, it looks like I might need a, need a second. You can always buy a second battery, or you can just Buy the unit, start mowing, uh, and see if you if you have a big enough yard that you feel like this one battery won't do it. You can go get a second battery later if you decide to need that. So that's the cool thing. You can always add more batteries, add more capacity, and put one in the charger and take the other one and and start continue the mowing. So thousand watt hours is one kilowatt hour. And um, if you look at the cost, then one kilowatt hour of electricity costs about 12 cents, roughly. So if average city lawn is 3,000 square feet, and it takes about 200 watt hours to mow it, and if we think that there's some charging inefficiencies and we'll say we'll need 250 watt hours to charge that 200 amp watt hour battery, this means that if you mow your lawn four times, you can do that in one kilowatt hour of energy. And it costs you 12 cents. And uh, that means that you can mow your average city law, lot 33 times for $1. So that tells you how little energy you're actually using and how cheap it is to use um, electric lawnmowers. All right, next slide, please. So other considerations. We already talked about self-propelled or not. Uh, my Neighbor, I don't have a self-propelled mower. I don't feel that I need it. My neighbor bought a self-propelled mower. He said, actually, he doesn't need it. So he could have gone with the, with the non-self-propelled, but this is whatever you're used to and whatever you like. Uh, collecting or mulching or both. So you might be one that wants to just uh, let it cut uh, the lawn down and it mulches it. So it, uh, leave the grass clippings on the lawn or you want to collect them, and then it has to, has a ba has to have a back uh, behind it. Um, that's, that's what you can choose there. Some of these actually have automatic plate spe speed adjustments, meaning that it usually goes with a little bit um, uh, like a slower speed uh, to conserve the energy. But then when it feels that there's a um, thicker lawn that comes up it, and it needs to use more power, then it increases the speed automatically. Uh, and that way, make sure that the cutting uh, results are good. So that's a pretty pretty handy feature with some of these. There's cutting height adjust adjustments between one and a half inch and to four inch. Uh, and different different uh, units have a little different ways to do that. They have they are quite a bit different uh, weight. So think about how important that is for you. If you want the lighter one, just 
keep looking at the weight numbers too and see, okay, how, how heavy is the unit for you? And then the warranty, of course, a different thing. And then look at what other equipment are using the same batteries. You can find trimmers, hedge trimmers, leaf blowers, chainsaws, snow blowers, even some hand tools. So that's cool uh, nowadays that you can use the same battery for many different uses. But again, if you buy a Ryobi uh, um, unit with Ryobi batteries, you can all, only use these with Ryobi. If you happen to buy Ego, uh, you can only use Ego batteries with Ego equipment. So that's that. There might be one or two manufacturers that share them, but, uh, but it's not very common. So you can't really count on that. Next slide, please. Care and maintenance. Um, you should clean the extra clippings after each use, but remember to take the battery off uh, before you do this. So just take the battery off, so then it's safe to work on the on the machine, and then you can tilt tip it over and clean that uh, deck underneath there. At the same time, you can check uh, the blade and see how sharp it is. And you could sharpen it yourself if you if you like to, even with the file, you could sharpen a little bit every time if you like to. That might be a little overkill, uh, but at least once in a se season, you should check it. And, and if you don't want to sharpen it yourself, yourself, use it, then um, take it to a sharpener and they can do that for you. Um, for storing the batteries, I would recommend leaving the battery to about three quarters full uh, in the fall. If you don't happen to have a snow blower, that you use it then for in the winter time too. So the basic idea is that you shouldn't leave it fully charged um, for for uh, in the fall, and uh, then you can check the charge level once or twice in the winter to see, see if it needs to be charged. Usually these don't. Usually they their uh, battery charts last easily through the winter, um, and. Uh, depends on how you can do it. For some batteries, you have to put it in the charger to see what the battery uh, state of charge is. And for some of them, they actually have a really handy display like this Ryobi uh, battery here, for example. There's a button here that I can push and it shows how many uh, lights are on. And this one seems to have four lights on. It's fully uh, powered. So I would leave it so that in a full time so that there's three uh, lights on and, and do that. And uh, the best way to is to store them for example, in a, some nice and cool place, not necessarily outside in a cold, but like in a basement um, in your house uh, during when you're not using them. Next slide, please. And you've right. got, I'm going to add here too that you'll be talking a little bit more about storage uh, during the Q and A. We've got a couple of questions about about that. So okay, well, um, yeah, more to good. come. That's excellent. Um, we'll be talking about whatever topics you're interested in at that point. So um, there are also robot mower options. These are becoming more popular all the time. The cool thing with these is that this is kind of like, this is totally different approach to the mowing alarm. This is the basic idea is that you put it out in the spring and take it, uh, take it in in the fall. So it actually does its job by itself without you having to do anything to it. So it keeps grass mowed all the time. It just goes slowly there, quietly around your yard and that's the job. When it's the, it feels that it's uh, the battery charge is getting low, it just drives itself to the charger that is by your house there, uh, connects it connects to that charges, and then continues. It's very convenient, I hear. Um, it just does it, and, and you can set it up. For example, it can charge. It can do it in the night time, if you want to. So it doesn't bother you during the daytime. Um, it can work in really steep hills, I hear. It's very good for those. Uh, they're a little bit expensive though. They are still, usually these are, we're talking about thousand dollars plus units, but uh, I've heard some people saying that these are actually good for if you have a very large lawn because they keep doing and trimming it all the time. So you don't have to go there and spend hours uh, in mowing it, but you just have to let the motor, the, the robot mower take care of it. And it's actually what's cheaper option in that case. So um, read more about it if that's something that you're interested in. I've, I've heard good things about them myself. Next slide, please. And then the riding mowers, there's more and more of these. 
price range is, is huge. You can get something that is a few thousand dollars, and then you can buy some, there are some commercial units that are over $30,000. And the ones that are commercial units that are over $30,000, they actually have a battery uh, sizes that are bigger than some small electric cars have. So they are really a commercial uh, units at that point. So if you have a very large lawn and uh, you like to do that, there are more options in this category too. So we have the list of these, and then there's also uh, some, some more and more you can find, find uh, reviews and others um, from internet about people who are using them or just uh, comparisons between different mowers. Next slide, please. You know what this means? Oh, yeah. That means that we are actually in my garage then. Yes. So we are going to take a, a step back and go into your garage. So now we get to have a little bit of show and tell time under the hood with the actual lawnmowers. Um, and given this remote setting, we're going to do our very best to make sure that you roll them up really close to the camera and people can kind of get a look. All right, we'll do that. So I have here uh, some blowers, electric lawnmowers, even some, one snow blower. Then I have a trimmer, I have etcher, I have a head trimmer, uh, one small electric chainsaw, and then a, even a pole saw combination. So I'll show you a little bit about all of these. And uh, the units that I have here are, uh, they happen to be Ryobi, Ego, I have... I don't even know what that green one is. Then I have Remington there. Why do I have these uh, brands? We just happen to have these. Um, Egos happen to be mine. Ryobis happen to be my neighbors. We are really not trying to highlight any certain makes and models. This has happened to be the easiest for us to be available. And there, I haven't seen a huge differences between different models. They all seem to be very good. Um, so. Um, that's that's us. We are not trying to promote certain make some models. So I'll show you first how to. Um, if we look at the, my ego here, so how to work with that. Here's the mower, and here's the battery, and um, here's the charger for it. So charger is a very simple unit. You just plug it in the wall, and then you drop this battery in there, and that's that. That's how you charge it. And then when you want to take it out, you just open this here and plug the battery in there, close that, and you're good to go. Um, you have a safety switch there, uh, two safety switches, actually. You have to put the key in here, and then you have to uh, pull the uh, lever, lever to watch you for it to work. So that's how it, it would it would run. Um, I won't be running it inside here though, so I'm just taking the battery out because I want to work with uh, show you this unit. Again, if you're doing anything with the mower, you should just take the battery out, and then it doesn't have a power uh, unit there, so it's safe for you to work with it. All right. So this one has a Leaf collection bag back here. Um, very easy to take out and then put back back into there. So that's that. I'm just taking it off right now. I'm showing you um, the other things. This has a height adjustment for this. So many of them do have a height adjustment for the at least a couple of settings there for uh, how high this bar is. But then if you are uh, want to store this, you just open these, push this one in there, close those back, then move this one up, and it's easy to store. So this is how I had, for example, it during the winter time. I just put it by one wall, and it's easy to store that way. It's very easy to handle with just one hand. And then I'm showing you here the inside, how you can see the plate here. Again, I have the battery off, so now I can touch the plate here. So you can see the plate condition very easily here. You can, it's easy to clean here if I need to clean it with this one, and that's about it. One thing that I wanted to also show you here, setting it back up here, 
to ready to go. Um, here's a lever that you use to adjust the height. So it's a one lever operation here. It's very easy to adjust the height with this one. Some of them have individual height adjustments, and some people actually prefer the individuals if they have a certain certain use case where they want to do that. I don't care one one works well for me, and it's easy to do with this one. The Ryobi here is very similar to that, so I don't go too much into details with this one. Um, the only thing that my neighbor said that this uh, locking here that locks the bar, these uh, tend to come loose a little bit. So he has to figure out the one uh, fix for that. This one has very powerful lights here in front too. So that if my neighbor decides to mow the lawn in the night time, he can do it with these lights. So, so that's that. This also has a one uh, handle adjustment for the height. Very easy to do that. And the same way here, you put the battery, uh, or actually this has a place for two batteries here. Um, so this one can 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 have a store store ba storage battery for a second one because it has a little smaller batteries. So you can have one two full batteries there when you start, and then when you let's say that you go through the half of the one or more, and then you're like, okay, I need a, I'm, I'm running out of this one battery. You just uh, flip the other bar batteries around there. And then you have a full battery there for your mowing available for you. So that's that. Oh, but by the way, this is a self-propelling one too. So this one could, could self-propel uh, too. All right, what should we check out next? Well, next I'll show you the snow blower. Um, we'll hope that we don't need this anymore this spring. We should. Uh, these ones are very easy to use. The same thing, battery goes in here. Uh, uses the same battery here. Same kind of a system for starting it. Uh, the direction here for the chute and then uh, height of the thing there. And it has, this one has nice rubber blades for it. Um, I like this a lot. Um, very easy and very light you need to use. That's a good thing about these things because it's, it doesn't have an engine, so it's much lighter and still does the same job in there. All right, let's talk about blowers. Here's a Ryobi one. Uh, the battery in this on this one goes goes on top, so I have the battery here, and you pop it right here. Boom, and you're ready, ready to go with this one. So that's that's how simple it is with this. And then um, the Ego one, um, again, battery in this one goes underneath it. So it's a little different in that way. But these are very easy and light, especially when you don't have a battery. This is my one finger uh, working with this. But very powerful units. You can adjust the uh, power here with a little, there's a little dial here. But you can do that. And uh, very simple and easy. I have also a corded um, blower that I used to use, and I thought, why do I need the need the battery powered blower? I have the corded one, and it kind of works really well that one too. But truthfully, this is so convenient and easy to use because I don't have to think about the cord at all. I need some to do, use to blowing something. I just take this one, pop the battery in, and go and do it wherever I want. It is just uh, easier uh, unit to use. All right, uh, other units. Then here is a um, trimmer, so string trimmer. It's a very good unit. I like it, like it a lot, and also very light, as you can see. It's when you put the battery in there, it weighs a little bit more, but otherwise this is these are very uh, light units. Then I, my neighbor actually has a unit here. That is also a trimmer. This is the Ryobi one. It, it is also a string trimmer, but then he has a different uh, blade here. So now you can use this as an edger. So if you need to, need to do edging on, on the side of your um, walk path, this can do the edging too. Then if you need a trimmer, then you just open this 
put the trimmer head here and can use it for both uh, use cases. So that's the advantage of that. Um, then we have a head trimmer here. Head trimmer that I have is, what is this, Black & Decker. I bought this used for 30 bucks. Uh, <laughs> and this is a corded one. So you plug the cord in here uh, because I, I have just one bush that I need, to, need this for and I use it once a year. So I really don't need it too often. Uh, so it doesn't make sense for me to buy a battery one and do that. Corded one works really well for me for that. And as I said, I bought this used because I didn't really uh, need to have a fancier unit for that use. Uh, plus then we have the, there's, if you look at the list um, for chainsaws, there's really a lot of different electric chainsaws now available and pretty powerful one already with the batteries one. This is a very small one again. Um, can you see it at all? Um, this is a very small and it's corded one. So you plug this in. I use this only to cut some branches off of our trees. So I don't have to have, again, very fancy units. And the cool thing about this one is that um, I have this pole uh, unit for it too. So you can actually connect this here to the pole and then you can use it as a pole saw. So that this is a multi-use and you can lengthen this one a little longer. And as I said, these are very affordable, very easy to use um, and, and pretty light too. So those are the units that I have here on display. Am I missing anything here? Remind no, me I, guys? I think it's my turn now. Um, you okay, could go ahead. Be honest, are you the kind of person who edges their sidewalk? No, I'm not. Okay, good. I My neighbor thought... is. <laughs> I was worried I had to like reevaluate everything I knew about you. Um, not to say edging <laughs> isn't good. It just oh, is uh, super, super achievers. Um, and I am, I am not one it's, of those. It's so... good that I answered right. Here. <laughs> well, I think we're about ready for the Q&A. Um, I hope you're staying warm in there, Yuka. Um, before we do the Q&A, I just want to put in a quick plug, since we're talking about electric things. Um, Clean Cars Minnesota still needs your help. I know some of you folks on the call might have gotten involved in the MPCA's rulemaking process for uh, clean cars and clean car, clean car standards, and that process is underway with the administrative law judge. Um, but there are forces at work against clean cars at the Minnesota legislature, so kind of like double whammy. Um, so to summarize, there's a bill that would strip the MPCA's ability to protect Minnesotans from transportation emissions. So pretty much this is some legislators trying to undermine Clean Cars Minnesota um, and the participation of the thousands of Minnesotans who submitted comments on the Clean Cars rulemaking process. So send a note to your legislators um, today, tomorrow, uh, pretty soon, because things are happening, we're, we're nearing the end of session, to ask them to oppose Senate File 450. If you go to fresh-energy.org slash take action, there is a ton more information about this kind of nuanced uh, challenge that's coming out of the legislature for clean cars. So super easy. Um, please take a few minutes to do that. And then mark your calendar for other events. Uh, it is Earth Day month, so we've got a ton of stuff going on. Um, interestingly, on uh, Thursday, we've got Earth Day itself, uh, an event called Reckoning in Coal Country, where we're gonna talk about how communities um, in Appalachia and Wyoming are uh, surviving and thriving without coal, uh, traditional coal mining communities. So. Lots of other stuff happening, fresh-energy.org slash events, and you'll find it all there. Ah, look at that. I needed the reminder that time. So we're going to do a poll uh, before we do the Q&A. Uh, let me go back to... And while you find your poll, I definitely want to highlight the EV exclusive owners panel that we are doing next week. So if you want to talk with EV owners about electric cars, join us then. Perfect. Thank you. Um, all right. Sorry. I... I accidentally relaunched the first question for the poll. So now you guys all should have been pushed the second question. So I know we haven't done the Q&A yet and a lot is still yet to come, um, but does everyone, uh, everyone should be seeing a poll that says, did this webinar change your opinion about buying or owning an electric lawnmower? So take a minute and fill that out. 
All right, perfect. I see results coming in. And then question two, which part of the presentation did you find helpful, including the Q&A, which like I said, is yet to come. Um, still a valid answer. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. We'll let you guys finish answering those questions. And now I think it's time for the Q&A. All right, I'm going to end the poll. Oh, I see results still coming in. <laughs> All right, well, let's start off um, with our most upvoted uh, question. So a couple other people wanted to hear about this. Uh, Tim asks, do any of the models have the option to use either battery power or switch to corded? So kind of a choose your own adventure model. Yuka, have you heard of anything quite like that? Wow, I haven't, Jillian. Have you seen <laughs> anything like that? Yeah, I have to say, in all of the research I did, I never really saw the convertible option. I think that would be a really cool avenue per to pursue, but I don't <laughs> currently know of any models that are like that. All right, cool. Um, so Paul commented that it would sure be nice to have a quality column in the grid. and. Uh, I know that would be a, a maybe a tough nut to crack uh, just because everyone has their own opinion and I don't know how you would gauge quality, but uh, Jillian, any initial reactions to that? Yeah, so the way that the lists are put together is that, you know, I sort of sort, I'm sort of on the website and I'll sort it by best sellers or highest rated. So a lot of these actually are in the highest rated um, sort of options inside of the site. So they, the ones that are being put on are sort of already considered high quality. I'm not quite sure how else to do it just because between sites, it can vary so much. You could have a two stars on one site and then four and a half on another. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's a good, it's just kind of built in, I think, in the way it is now. But that is something we could look into a little bit more if more people would be interested. Thank you, Jillian. Um, Yuka, this one's for you. Uh, is there any electric shock risk if mowing wet grass with a corded mower? Corded mower. I was going to say, if you are the battery mowers, no. And that is that is how it is. With the battery mowers, you don't have any any possibility to to have that happening because there's no potential difference between the ba uh, balance and the motor you and the voltages are also low with the corded one yes there is potential for that not necessarily for the wet conditions but more of if you run over your cord yes you ha you have a potential trouble there i would say that probably is the biggest risk risk there um in that way also if i mean if you would be in a full rain um, yeah, I could see that it wouldn't be the best idea. So I would definitely avoid that. So use this only in dry conditions and don't mow over your cord and you should be fine. That does feel like good tips for life, Yuka. Uh, all right, oh, yeah. just, so a question from Paul. Uh, do any of these mower require oil for lubrication? I know that the electric motors are super different than the internal combustion, but what are your thoughts on this? Commercial units, I'm sure, uh, do because they have much more, much higher power units, and they probably have some differentials there, some some transmission type of systems that so they might have. Some, of course, those are sealed systems, so you might have to change the oil every five years or something like that for for those. For all of these normal mowers, no, not really. Um, you don't. None of these have any oil needs. In them, the only thing that comes into my mind here that needs oil, of course, ah. is the chainsaw, because this one needs a, uh, oil to loop the chain. So please use bio-based uh, loop for the chain. You can find those too, so you don't have to use a traditional mineral oil to uh, for the chain loop lubrication. And you could, if I'm remembering correctly, when we did our event specifically about chainsaws, I think Bjork like walked us through how to lubricate a chainsaw and even how to sharpen the little teeth. 
Um, so folks can tune into the recording of the chainsaw specific, electric chainsaw specific video at the URL I just shared in the chat. It's actually pretty cool. I think we learned way more about chainsaws, at least than I ever thought I would at that event. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that, was, that was very, very good. <laughs> Uh, so we could talk a little bit about mulching leaves. So Tim asks if any of the models are particularly good at mulching. Now, my assumption would be like higher clearance better for mulching, um, but any thoughts there? If that's the uh, feature that you really uh, look for, I know that some of these have double blades. So, and in double blades, if you have a two blades there that I think they go counter, I mean, the other one goes clockwise and the other one goes counterclockwise. I haven't looked at that more uh, detailed, but those double blades ones are said to be good at mulching or they might have a special blades mm -hmm. for mulching. So look at those features. There are uh, some models that have uh, more capabilities in that area. And we have heard quite a few anecdotes about how great they are at mulching. I have one, and then I know someone else on this um, presentation also has one that that's all they do and use it for. Awesome. Cool. Well, actually, yeah. speaking of anecdotes, I'm going to ask a question because I know that we've got a good anecdote to share about it. Um, so Kathy says, are electric mowers feasible for lawn services? I have a large lawn and need the service. I do have an electric leaf blower, which I love. So Michael, or I know that we've, we've got a Fresh Energy Supporter, uh, Michael, I think is his name, and he actually convinced his church to go electric with their lawn service. So those services definitely exist. So you got any, or, or Lisa or anyone, any, any tips for where to find those types of services in your area? Uh, we've had seen a couple of case studies. Uh, the cities are starting to use more uh, electric lawnmowers and the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency has also put out um, grants and opportunities to lower the cost. As you can mentioned, they are a little more expensive. So I think if you just reach out to the typical um, service that you're looking at and ask them, are they using or will they consider using electric? That will be the, the, the needle that moves, moves this forward and um, the industry will see the need. Uh, I present at the um, Northern Green Expo every year and that's the topic of, of the expo, you know, hundreds of booths and people coming by and, and they're all asking about the electric. So it is coming. Yeah, and, yeah, UK, yeah why don't, don't you add a little I bit? I don't know if it. I have seen, yeah, I don't need, I know if I've seen any local companies yet really dedicating on that uh, myself, but definitely ask for them. If you, if you are, have just talk, talk to your service provider, say, I want you to see an electric lawn mowing service if you're not providing, whenever I find one, that's what I'm going to sign up for. Then they will start to think about, hey, maybe we should be the one who should be providing that option for those mm -hmm. customers who like it. And they will learn that actually it works well for them. And sooner or later, they will, uh, pretty soon, they will actually move all of their uh, equipment to that direction uh, when, they, when they learn how easy and how cheap it is for them to use them. Yeah, that's, yes, that's a great point. Um, question from Leticia. She's asking, are there robots that work well? I mean, if you're going to get one of those robot lawnmowers, it's, it's a pretty big price tag associated. Um, and you said that you'd heard that people thought that they worked well. Um, anything to add there, Yuka? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have one for my lawn and my mowing. I definitely don't need one. Uh, but uh, as I said, I've heard many people really liking them. I think Husqvarna was one of the um, models that they liked. But I would just read online reviews from actual users and see what they think about it and what are the advantages of certain models and, and what do they like about it. So that would probably be the best way to do it. So, there are a couple in the EV owners Facebook group that have this too. So you can put a posting out there and ask for local uh, community users too. And you can find these at your local hardware store. Perfect. And uh, Tim adds in the chat that lawn services are happy to use your electricity instead of their gas. And several years ago, Mother Earth Lawn Mowing did electric. So. If you're looking for a Google search term to get you started, I think Mother Earth lawn mowing is, is a good one. Um, James says, do you know anyone who wants to buy a used 
gas mower. And I know, I feel like in the past we've talked about uh, like a cash for clunkers kind of <laughs> service. Like, uh, do you know if there are any programs uh, happening like that now or how people can just safely dispose of their, their gas powered lawn mowers? <laughs> Yeah, I have a solution for you. Have fun with it. Um, get an electric lawnmower and then use this one a little bit on the old internal combustion engine uh, because uh, that's a one way to make sure that uh, no one is using that dirty unit anymore and uh, we get more electric lawnmowers. That's my take on it. Um, I, I think they are so polluting that we definitely shouldn't, shouldn't be uh, trying to use them as long as possible. I think we should just get rid of them. Um, just uh, um, that's that's my take on that one. And I know if you go to Eureka Recycling or other recycling facilities, they do have opportunities to safely recycle these versus just reusing them. And there's a question too, I wanna to circle back to um, specifically for you, Lisa and you, Jillian. Um, so Robert asks, uh, what should people do on an air quality alert day, especially if they still have gas powered lawn equipment? I feel like we've been seeing, or at least we saw a few of them this spring and, and they might be getting a bit more common. Uh, anything to add there to elaborate? Yeah. So as you sort of touched on, everybody is affected by air pollution and on air quality days, everybody kind of feels the same effects and it, you know, especially affects those with respiratory conditions. So on those days, try to reduce your polluting activities. Um, that includes driving, outdoor work, or even backyard fires, anything that could produce more pollution that could further aggravate, aggravate lungs. Um, sort of monitor your air quality index for the day and look for your air quality forecast in the future just to see you know, it might be okay today and it might be bad tomorrow. And then, you know, you can sort of plan out when to actually do those activities that might be considered polluting. And then there's also a lot more information on the American Lung Association site. And it has a long list of recommendations, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's just basically take care of yourself and try not to add any further pollution to the air if possible. Thank you for, for that answer. Um, and I know that we kind of answered Karen's question about um, battery storage, but Yuka, this is always my favorite uh, question to ask you about babying your battery. I know people have all sorts of ways they take care of them and prolong their lifespan. And I think you have your own special formula and it's pretty much like, ignore it, right? Do you want to say anything else about it? Yeah. I. I, I truthfully don't do anything to them. I I just like I don't at least I don't leave them full, but I just I don't pay too much attention to them. Um, that's that's how they seem to be doing just fine with that way. Again, if you want to pamper them, don't leave them full charged uh, for long periods of times, and um, and then put them maybe inside and don't leave them in the cold. But I've left these over the winter out in a cold garage too. And they have been just fine. I don't know, you guys. I feel like I've seen you pushing it around the block in a bassinet, um, but somehow you get your batteries yeah, sure. to last forever. Uh, so Kathy says, can I send this excellent presentation to my lawn service? And I want to circle up and let people know that we are actually recording this event. So I'm going to put it up on YouTube and send you all an email tomorrow about uh, where to find the link and how to watch it and share it and all that good stuff. There will also be links to the other videos that we've done about chainsaws and snowblowers and other sorts of electric uh, lawn equipment. Um, but now that we're talking about batteries, uh, Tim asks, how long can you expect the batteries to last? Back to babying, I guess. Yeah, I don't have a good answer to that because all the batteries are built a little differently for these and it depends on how you use them, how much they are, are used over time. If we look at, for example, um, electric car batteries, uh, they all, those seem to be lasting 12 to 15 years. So it's a much longer uh, time period for those. I don't think these will last uh, 
five years. I'll give you something. Maybe five years would be good average to these, um, but it depends on, on, on how much you use them. It's kind of the same thing with, with if you think about uh, your laptop batteries or cell phone batteries. Some models last longer and some shorter. Do I know the answer to this? I don't. I don't unfortunately know exactly which batteries would be the better or, or worse in that way. Great, thank you. Um, so Leticia adds that it would be great to see a list about mechanical mowers too. And Jillian, I think I saw you like shudder, like having to do more lists about more lawn mowers. Um, but have you guys ever thought about um, at the over at the Lung Association doing a list about real mowers, like the mechanical push? Like, yeah, I guess I would call them old fashioned, but they're not really old fashioned because they're still selling new ones, and I have one. Um, but I guess I am old fashioned. Any thoughts on on a rating system for those or adding a list to to the pile? Well, I'll add a couple of words about the real mowers. I used one for eight years, I think, and it works pretty well. The challenge with it is that it cuts most of the grass really well, but then there are some grass that learns how to not be cut. I don't know how they do that, but some grass learns that. And of course, those are the, that's the grass type that starts to grow more and more, and then you just keep on going over and over, and it doesn't happen to be cutting that certain grass. And uh, when that started happening more, I just, get, I, I just got at that time a corded lawnmower and, uh, and that did the job for me. And that's, that's when I would mo move from um, uh, real mowers to uh, electric lawnmowers. But see what works for you. You get a good exercise with, with, uh, with uh, those real mowers. Yep. And I have the same story. Um... Start with the real mower, still have it, and uh, move to the corded. The really nice thing about the real mower is it's great on hills if they're not, you know, too steep. So it's a little bit easier to, to manage too. Perfect. Yes. Uh, all right. I think we have one final question before we wrap up. So Karen asks, do the blowers have the capacity to bag as well. So I think this is in reference to the leaf blowers and how some of them like suck up and bag the, the chopped up leaves. Excellent question. I have a corded one that does that. So that's what I use for, for that. It's, it's hanging on the wall there. Cost me less, like less than 50 bucks the whole unit. But I don't know if the battery ones do. Gillian, do you have any ideas? Have you, have you seen if the battery ones have that function? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I think in most of the research I've done, they haven't had collecting bags. There's been backpack blowers where the battery is on your back, but I'm trying to imagine if there's also a bag on there. And mm. right now, I don't think I've seen one. So it might just be on the corded, but I'm not aware of any on the batteries that I've on the battery powered blowers that I've seen at least. All right, we've got Yuka digging around in the toolbox. Let's see what he brings us this time. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Coming up, coming up, coming up. So here I have uh, that machine. So this Toro unit that is corded one uh, does have the capability to back to. So this does the job. This is way heavier than my uh, battery powered one. Uh, but um, still does the job. I mean, and I, I use this practically only time. Only time if I need to do the backing, uh, then I use this one. Otherwise, I use the battery one. Well, gee, I feel like we're coming up on time, and I'm, you know, I'm very curious what other electric lawn equipment you have hiding in your garage, Yuka. I know it's a big garage with a second level, but uh, I don't know if we have time to go into everything <laughs> that you have been shared with yeah, us I already. Think we'll so, keep it this. thank you. Any parting thoughts uh, from our panelists before we leave? I think from my perspective is just to download some of those lists and uh, check out what you what you want and 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 uh, consider. There are actually some of the utility companies are also providing some rebates. So check your local utility company if they have some programs where they say, hey, if you buy an electric lawnmower, we'll give you 50 bucks or 100 bucks uh, for that. Um, some kind of credit for it. And if they don't, if the utility company doesn't do that, you can always ask their customer service, hey, are you providing any um, 
any rebates or credits if I move from if I drop oil and stop using that and start using your electricity um, you can you can try to push them towards that direction if they aren't providing uh, anything yet great thank you Yuka uh, Jillian and Lisa anything anything else before we part I just like to add that you can buy these used uh, they're on Facebook uh, Facebook marketplace there or you can just borrow them f one from a friend to try them out you don't have to go out and buy brand new and um, a little bit you know the low end ones do a great job too to start off with so you don't have to start off fancy and big yeah and if you buy a, if you buy a uh, used one uh, and then you decide to upgrade later you can always sell it uh, so that's that's the that's a good way to do it it's it's you're not you're not putting too much you're not making a big investment here in that way all right, thank you. And because I like ending every meeting with action items, my action item is that I am going to send everyone an email with a link to the recording and the info sheets um, probably tomorrow, if I'm being honest. And uh, something for Lisa and Julian to think about is adding noise ratings potentially to the spreadsheet. Um, as if you don't have enough on your plate as we're entering, you know, prime uh, lawn mowing season and all the other things happening in the summer and spring. Uh, and Yuka, I guess I'm letting you off the hook. You get to clean up your garage. That's that's your action item, okay? All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you everyone for being with us. It was really nice to be with you tonight. And uh, join us for further events in April and stay tuned for that email in your inbox. Have a great night.